Hello everyone, welcome back to Bullpen Sessions. Right now we're gonna talk about mechanics and some drills you can work on for those mechanics. Uh, coach, nine to 12 year olds, five to 12 year olds. Um, I think your philosophy is more to, to teach them how to stretch. More than Basically, yeah, the least amount of movement possible when it comes down to a pitcher so we throw better strikes. The stretch seems to be the one that we can really just work on kicking our leg up and going directly to the catcher to help us with our control. The more movement you have as you go along and getting older, the more chances you have to make maybe a balance mistake or a release point uh, mistake. Got it. So first thing is we have a lot of talk about right now whether we go from the wind up or if we go from the stretch. I'm a big believer now that most of these kids, the least amount of movement they have, the better off they are of staying more into a stretch position here. But to give you the version from back when I was playing, we still want both toes pointing towards our, our target. We want to make sure the glove is balls in our gloves. We're ready to go whenever the catcher gives us our sign. Once we do that, the transition is we got to get a rhythm step. Okay, the rhythm step is just either going to be a back step here, so we can get the pivot of our foot here to get balanced. All right, if we don't get this thing in front of the rubber and balance, it's going to be really hard for us to continue going in to a straight line to our catcher. So once we get our transition here, we're looking at our balance here. From there, our hands still are here. We break. Now we're looking at our landing. All right, we're landing with our toes straight towards our target. Our glove or elbow is trying to point to our catcher. Our arms nice and loose back here with the grip. As we rotate here, our back foot is going to rotate as we tuck our glove. So our arm is out here in a good release position. From there, we're taking our chin and our arm to our target, finish, and then our back leg comes up and we're in a good fielding position in case the ball is hit back to us. Always remember that we are the next fielder and the closest fielder to the batter once a pitcher throws the ball. So from the stretch, you basically have already eliminated the small step, the pivot, because you're already in your pivot position. You're spread out a little bit more than shoulder width apart. Ball can either be in your hand or your glove. And all you're doing now is coming set just like we were in this position, but now we've eliminated that. We're still right here, our feet are apart. Our break still doesn't happen until I get back with my leg, break and go. So we eliminate a little bit of step. Most of our boys actually throw a little harder from the stretch than they do from the wind up because they're more controlled, they're more balanced, so they can use their body better. So the same basic idea, uh, we're going from, you know, looking into the catcher, getting our signal, coming set, going, picking up for it to our balance point, breaking our hands and driving to the plate. Right. Now, this is all with nobody on base. So right. this is just taking away the wind up and putting them in that position of pivot already and getting set. So a lot of guys, if you want to hide the ball like we talked about before, you already have your grip. You still have to come set. But now we're our bot weight is a little bit more on our back foot so when we pick up we feel the hip turn just like we did from the wind up our break is the same our knee still drives down everything stays the same here we finish all the way through and be ready to feel the ball correct and then when you get to your balance point show me what how we break our hands what what's the, when and where the best places to break your hands so once we get to our balance point here and we get into this position right here, what we want to do is make sure that our hip is leading to our catcher. All right, we're going to break pretty much right over our, back, our front knee. So the rhythm I like is, is once they get up, they go down together. All right, that's going to keep the weight still back on my back leg here till my landing. Nothing's going to happen till my landing. That's when I transition my hips, my arm and shoulders, rotating through and finishing. Now, do, when you, people say drop and drive, is that what you're talking about? Typically, yes. Younger guys, we don't want to think about it too much because the whole idea is throwing strikes. Right. We want to get them balanced. So if they're coming from the wind up, we still want to get this turn as much as possible, but my shoulder's staying in a position where I'm going towards the catcher. From there, I really want to make sure that my hands are breaking as my knee's going down. So I'm breaking to give my arm a chance to get up which now gives me a chance to get my arm from here to a good throwing slot here. Notice again that my chest, everything is going right towards my catcher, so I'm trying to stay inside a box. So as I release the ball, I'm releasing it out in front, finish my back spin, and my back leg is going to come through. 
So the back leg will drive. It'll be just a slight bend as a collection. All right, slight bend as a collection as we break. As we break our arms still here until we land. Now the explosion happens from landing to rotation to follow through. And so when you when you're bringing your hand back, you want the fingers on top of the ball, or what, what's your philosophy there? With as, we, uh, as we're going through, we want this to be as loose as possible. Okay. Got my forcing uh, grip with my thumb underneath. Comfort wise, I'm trying to use the seams as much as I can on the very tips of my fingers. That's the last thing I should feel when I release the ball. So as my break comes, I don't want to go straight down. It wants to be a loose, but making sure this arm is loose and down. Bill Way is teaching straight up. We want it to be a little bit looser here, so our shoulders are still lined up, so it becomes a rhythm here. So here and here, halfing together, fingers still on the top of the ball, but as I rotate, my fingers will be behind the ball. From there's where we're gonna get everything from our fastball change up curveball grip to finish our throw and then come through. You'll know if you're driving off the backside is if your back leg comes up off the rubber. All right, we have so many kids that throw, and they just do this, there's no drive from their back leg. The drive from back leg is once we get to here and we throw, you'll notice that my knee is driving here down, but at the same time, as I throw, when I get over my front knee, my leg's automatically gonna pop up and be ready to go. Typically, your leg should be up almost as high as your shoulder as you're coming through. Okay. All right, so we're working on our, our grip wise. So now Dylan's gonna show me his four seam rotation, grip. You see there, his fingers are on top, just like we did when we were warming up earlier. He's gonna go from the stretch, being nine years old, I think it's better for him for balance. So go ahead and get yourself set, Dylan. Look, keep, make sure you're looking at your catcher the whole time. Come set, keep your feet a little bit apart. Here's right where he's gonna start his break, bring it up with your leg, keeping the balance here. He's going to break and throw. Ready and go. Break, throw, follow through. Excellent job. Every time he goes through, he's going to reach and get the ball back from the catcher and then come right back up to that same set position. Look at your catcher. Come set. We're going to see his weight is back. His knee's already bent to the driving position. Now a little bend on your back leg and go. Break. Perfect strike. All right, we have Red, the left-hander now, seven years old. So with younger guys, we go through a different type of grip. We can still go with a three-finger grip because their hands are so slow, I mean so small. So we want to be able to get better grip on the ball versus maybe a two-seam grip here. So three-seam, three-finger grip means right here, thumb still underneath. He's still getting the backspin with three fingers instead of two. Can you turn that ball over for me just so I can see it with your hand on it? Grip. Yep, and then turn that over. Perfect. And so this this is recommended for kind of the seven seven to maybe even nine year olds guys yeah. that have their fingers haven't really grown very much yet. Uh, Rhett does do both of them, so we're gonna have him demonstrate the three finger first, and then we'll do the two seam. Great. All right. So Rhett, go ahead and show him the three seam. Put your foot on the rubber. All right. Go up there. He's got thumb underneath, fingers right there, all the way through. Good. Now. Go ahead and spread out a little bit. Look at your catcher. Good. I come set. Put the ball in your glove. Keep your feet apart. Go on through. Up. Hold your balance. Right there. See, so he's got good balance. Gloves up. Ready and go. Break and throw. Good throw right there. Now, make sure, Fred, you're always in a good fielding position afterwards. First thing is throwing strikes, right? Second thing is making sure we're ready for the ball to come back to us. Got it? All right. So let's go two seam this time. Two seam grip. Can you show me that two seamer? He's got a two seam. We've worked on both of them. It really depends on the size and really the comfort of the throw. You want to get out of the three finger grip as soon as we can. That is going to help him with velocity with using two fingers instead of three. All right, ready? ready? Get yourself set. Apart a little bit. Good. Balance, hold your balance right there, ready and go. Break forward, release, fielding. Good job right there. So both two seam, three seam for him, works pretty well, and throwing good strikes.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bullpen Sessions. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about some mechanic drills that you can work on. We do. We have a couple different ones. We have the crisscross drill. We have the no stride drill. Then we have the jump back drill and then jump forward. All these drills should be done probably about 10 throws each, work on strictly throwing mechanics and good backspin. Good deal. We're going to demonstrate those and then you guys can watch along. Thanks. All right. For the first drill, we have a crisscross drill. Base is the balance drill. We're foot's on the rubber, ball's in our glove. We're going to cross over our foot to give us a good angle so our hip's going straight to the target. All we're going to do is pick it up, drive down, throw, and then pop our leg up. Balance is the most important part of this. All right, once we get set, making sure that we're able to get here, break, and throw. This one's called the no stride drill. Uh, again, we're working on a pitching rubber here, front foot's here, but we're putting our landing foot like we've already strided. So we've already gone from this position to this position. So we want to feel how our weight's going to shift and how we're going to drive off our back leg. Still use my four seam grip. I have the cones here in front just for my player to make sure he's lined up with his toe going towards home plate. He starts with the ball in his glove. He's going to get a rhythm. Sometimes you can do it a couple times. You just want to get a rhythm to break. So right at his belly button, we're going to break. Again, we're feeling the hands coming out here. Then we're going to go from here, stopping this position first, throw, pop your foot over the hurdle, be ready to catch the ball. Again, we'll go a little faster this time. Everything's set. The whole idea of this right here is when I get back here, that my break is going to be over my back leg, just like we would be if we were picking our leg up. So we're back, throw, bring your back leg through. And the hurdles, you can substitute, you know, anything really for that, right? That cones, you can substitute anything that just gives them a better idea that their back foot doesn't want to go here. We want to make sure that back leg is snapping as that knee turns, snapping here, snapping up and coming through. All right, so as we got Dylan here for the uh, no stride drill, we're going to go all the way through it. He is, once again, focused on throwing strikes, number one, but getting a rhythm onto his back leg, and he's throwing. Are you ready, Dylan? All right, make sure you got to look at your catcher. Get a good rock forward. Rock back, break, throw, and then he follows through. Grab the ball. Let's try one more. Remember, again, his back leg is popping up over the hurdles. His front toe opened up a little bit more, Dylan. Open up the front foot. There you go. He's lined up with his catch. Shoulders are lined up. Rock forward, rock back, throw, and pop through. And he's ready to catch the ball. We got left, left hand of Red coming up here. Again, he's spread apart, so he's balanced like he's already taken a step. Red's got his two finger grip. Ready, Red? Go ahead and put the ball in your glove. You're going to rock forward to your catcher. Rock forward and back and throw. Freight. Good. Just making sure again that he's ready to catch the ball in case it comes back to him. One more time, Red. Grip, get the ball in his glove, rock forward, and lock. There you go, rhythm, and good. All the thing we want to always remember is glove wise, we're trying to keep it in so our shoulder stays in, trying to bring it in as much as we can to help our chest get open. Okay, coach, so we did the no stride drill, uh, and now we're going to move into which drill now? This will be our load up drill. We're going to basically load up on our backside, and it'll be a little jump back and throw forward drill. Okay. So again, you get yourself set at the pitching rubber. Again, we're not throwing a full distance, probably about half to three quarters of whatever the distance the players would be throwing off the mound. We're getting everything still set, addressing the catcher, still coming set like the stretch position, but now we're going to pick this right foot leg up, jump back over the rubber, balance, reach, and throw. So the biggest part here is we want to feel that this, when this back leg comes back, that we have the balance here. So when they stabilize here, they break and then they go forward. That's why we want to jump back for balance, still driving the legs and finishing. All right, so we have Dylan ready to do the jump back drill. Dylan, the most important thing is make sure you feel that weight back so you can explode. Okay, address your catcher, spread your feet apart a little bit. All right, go ahead and jump back, hold your balance and go. Great balance right there. 
and he leads right into the catcher. His stride was going right towards the catcher, using his legs, using power to go, go forward. Let's try it one more time, Bill. Again, he's going to pick up that leg. It's a pace drill. He's going to hold and go. Feeling his body, driving down, his legs working all the way through. Good Let the air red. All right, red. Remember now, same thing. Use three fingers the first time. All right. Okay. You're going to jump back, hold your balance, and then go forward to your catcher. Slip your catcher. Kick your back leg up. Jump back. And go. Good strike right there. One thing we always want to make sure of, Red, come on up here again real quick. For either lefties or righties, go ahead and jump back for me. Go ahead and jump back. All right. As it goes through, we really still want to make sure that our leg is out here. A lot of times we'll get we call it flamingo where they're getting back here. We still want to have that to help our drive as we're going through. So when they land, now ready and go. He's going straight to his target. Loose, still getting the balance, but we really want to make sure this leg is out, not tucked, because if it is, he opens his leg up too much. Here's where we get our drive from our legs. So wrap one more time. Try to get that leg out a little bit more this time is your job. Good, and go. Good job right there, being ready to field the ball. Excellent job, Brett. So coach, now we're gonna do similar drill. Very similar drill, but this time actually they're gonna be jumping forward, trying to feel their momentum as they're going towards the uh, catcher. So we're still getting set in the regular position. Everything's all ready to go, but we're gonna kick up like in the stretch position, but now they're gonna take their back leg, big jump, step, and throw. All right, so you're feeling the momentum of your legs balanced here as you jump, and then we're striding and going through. It helps in balance. It helps in the drive to the home plate. It feels a little bit more momentum-wise when they throw the strikes. Right? All right, so we have Dylan here doing the uh, jump forward drill. Go ahead and get yourself set in your set position. He's going to pick his leg up, uh, pick it up, front leg, jump, big jump, and throw. Perfect strike right there. One to make sure that his leg still stays out like we talked about with Rhett. But he's getting that big jump, feel the support of his back leg, and then driving off. One more time. Get your balance first. Now jump forward, balance, and throw. I think it really helps with kids feeling their power in their throw when they're making sure they're using their body the right way. All right, Rhett, we got Rhett ready to go for the jump up forward drill. Go ahead and kick your leg up. Balance, big jump. Throw. There you go. Now you see how he fell back just a little bit. Go and get the ball, Rhett. All right, just making sure again that as he goes through, go ahead and get set, Rhett. Okay. Up first. Right. Up first. Up first. Ready. Now he's got to feel his support now. Lean forward just a little bit. Ready. Now big jump and go. Big jump and go. So again, for the younger guys, even that little jump helps them stabilize their body, help them throw through. As the older guys get up there, we're trying to get more explosion with their legs to feel that thrust going home. Or going home. 